KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas and Fort Worth, the voice of the people. Business owners, tell KNON's listeners about your business. You can put your business or event on KNON. KNON currently has space available to run announcements for you. Tell KNON's listeners about your goods, services, nightclub, concert, or event. Help keep the voice of the people on the air while putting your information on the air. KNON's been named the number one radio station in Dallas by both the Dallas Observer and D Magazine. Put your business with Dallas's number one station. Call now for more information at 214-828-9500, extension 227, or extension 233. For more information, go to KNON.org and click on the Run Spots on KNON page. It's a great way for your business to support community radio while letting more people know about you. And good afternoon and welcome to Lambda Weekly. I'm Dave Taffet here in the studio with Ron Landis and the late Patty Fink. Our guest today is Mayor Mike Rawlings. She, she, you don't know what an honor. She was here 10 minutes early. She doesn't do that. Oh, I that. thought she was dead. You said the no, late Patty Fink. When but she's I have dead, sworn we'll that after, even after I'm gone, I'm going to still do the show. So, And yeah. we've arranged her funeral. will start at 11 o'clock and okay. she'll arrive at 1130. Mayor Mike Rawlings is our guest. And he is, the, of course, the 61st mayor of Dallas. He's the former CEO of Pizza Hut, a number of other companies that you've worked for. Uh, you worked for the city. Uh, you helped build the bridge oh, we when did. you were the city's homeless are. Yeah. We're going to talk about all that stuff uh, during the hour. Let's start off with the LGBT stuff, because a lot of stuff has gotten done over the last mm -hmm. couple of years, and especially over the last two. Um, I think you worked your way into some of them and, yeah. and got yeah. the... Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, obviously, um, I've always felt... Uh, that LGBT issues were important to me in my life and um, and when I became mayor I knew they were a big part of the city I was uh, 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 chairman of the uh, uh, Dallas Convention and Visitors Bureau mm -hmm. and and I, I learned how many uh, tourism dollars are brought in with the community so I kind of was ramping up with a learning mode the key was how to integrate that within the um, uh, the workings of city politics mm -hmm and uh, what needed to get done in the community. I probably didn't know some of those specifics uh, that uh, people helped me out with. And then uh, and we've just ended with uh, signing under the amicus brief of, uh, for the Supreme Court. Uh, so it has been a bit of an evolution. And, and oh, that is, awesome. Yeah, that is something that you just did. Uh -huh. uh, that hearing is going to be held Tuesday. Yep. Oh, yep. yeah. That's and, right. uh, Oral yeah. arguments this Tuesday. This week. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Um, which amicus brief was it uh, this this was for marriage equality yeah oh, okay yeah and then um, um, it just it it was interesting to me because I realized um, I had I kind of knew what amicus briefs are mm -hmm. but to me this was the Super Bowl this was the seminal moment of, for this whole thing mm -hmm. and if I uh, I felt that I could be added uh, a fodder in, 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 in this thing because um, there was, uh, I think, uh, Anise Parker in Houston uh, and, and a small town, and that was the only other mayors in Texas. So having another wow. mayor in Texas I thought was uh, appropriate and could really mean something. Sure it does, because we have this image across the country of being this conservative city Yeah, yeah. with uh, we, the lesbian sheriff. That's right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And, but, but that's Luke our image of being... Good job. It, it, but that's our image, and, and to have the mayor of Dallas on a brief like that, I think, means something. Yeah, uh, I, I think it does, uh, and I was, um, um, I just hope this happens so much, and mm -hmm. we can kind of put this behind us. It's, you know, I, I, I meet so many people from the East Coast, and I came from the East Coast, and here, and they swear Dallas is a red city. Right. You know, they, that is just, and, and at one point it was, but we have changed so much. Sure. And for them to understand the politics that are happening here, where I get called out for not being progressive enough many mm -hmm. times, uh, and I understand that I'm a Democrat, but I, I get called out for not being progressive enough. It, times have changed in Dallas mm -hmm. a lot. Sure, so. sure. And I think one of the most extraordinary things that we've had recently, um, in just in the last, uh, well, was it November, I guess, 77% um, of voters who came out for that election supported a very inclusive um, change to the charter. Yes. The city charter yes. to include non-discrimination uh, non protections 
uh, based on uh, a whole raft of things, including genetic characteristics, mm -hmm. but also sexual orientation, gender identity, expression. Yeah, it's and that amazing. was it. Was it's interesting because uh, there were a lot of things in that charter that needed to be cleaned up. Mm -hmm. That was one of them, um, uh, technically and substantively. Uh, but that was it. Kind of flew through city uh, the city council, uh, mm -hmm. as I was saying earlier. Um, LGBT issues are inherently political. Either you're you want to explain to the world how much you're for them or how much you hate them, you know, and, and, and the kind of fight. But these issues at city council, at least in Dallas, mm -hmm. seem to be uh, getting through the system. I think we work through the system. I think having the LGBT task force, I think Adam uh, working with you on that, education on stuff. You've got a couple of people that are still very principled against them, but but uh, most of these folks are politicians. You know, they're kind of listening and, and understanding what's going on. For those of us who do live in Dallas or mm -hmm. Dallas proper, we would we might think that the surrounding cities also have um, discrimination policies that include um, LGBT, and it doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, I think you know we saw the big dirt kick up with what happened in Plano, yes. and other than that, what is the Grand Prairie? Well, Grand Prairie, the, there was never any discussion about right. it. We didn't even know about it till a couple of years after it was done. instituted because they just did it. And, you know, I would I would expect that, you know, like Irving or Garland, which are huge suburbs, um, they do not. Um, do you used to communicate with some of the uh, surrounding city mayors? And I do, and we've talked about these things at mayors' conferences and, and the like. I've never really been active in uh, – the only thing I've really been active about – asking them to consider at city council level is uh, water ordinances mm -hmm. because we north texas water is a, is a really uh, uh, um, uh, we don't have as they don't have as much water as we do and i want them to go to two-day week watering but um it's 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 a very interesting thing because outside of the city of dallas um there seems to be and, and, and harry did a great job kind of powering through that issue in plano um, but there seems to be this notion that the Tea Party drives things because of what's happened with the, the legislative gerrymandering. So you've got a lot of Tea Party legislators down in Austin, but that's driven by the gerrymandering, the, uh, the, the drawing of those districts, not by uh, uh, cities. So I bet Garland, if you talk to most Garland folks, would be very supportive of uh, non-discrimination, uh, a part of their charter, um, but everybody gets scared because oh my goodness, some um, you know this is going to be a, a third rail, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to get elected. So, what do you think are the best ways to get those kinds of things through, I, and I, what are the bad I, ones that you've seen? Well, as I think mayor? the bad ones, and and, and and let me start with. I always say good news, bad news. Mm -hmm. Give me the bad news first. <laughs> I always like to go there. I think at times people that want to make change feel that if they pop somebody in the nose, they're going to get their attention. And you do get their attention, but they usually run away. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think the the proper way, uh, I, I kind of like to suck people in mm -hmm. and just, come on, it doesn't hurt that badly sort of approach. And through task force, I think having open communication, people learn from both, both ways, and it takes you know, nine months longer, maybe, you know, uh, a year longer. But if it, if they're done that that way, then the, the issues, uh, I think, are accepted much more because they're not uh, so uh, fearful of them. And, and look at the way, look at what happened in Houston compared to Dallas. Dallas, we just passed it. Yes. And we passed right. it with 77 percent. I think, what was it, seven precincts didn't vote for it, but Every other Everybody precinct did. across mm -hmm. the entire city voted for it. Yeah, I like our intelligence in Dallas. I like it. Yeah, I like that. yeah. So and, anyway. and it seems we have this this like protect a shield, mm -hmm. you know, around us that a lot of that kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. hasn't but you know what? Before. I'll tell you this. I was at the GLBT Chamber of Commerce the other night, and someone said to me, and I think it's a great, great point, that business will be the ultimate driver of these things it has it, been it has and, been and 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 usually lgbt issues are democratic issues and democrats are more anti-business and so but the, there's an ally so you want to be you want to make a change in the city of garland okay 
find an employer <laughs> oh. that that is is big into this, write a letter to the mayor and the city manager and say, you know what, we want to be in this city and we want this. And suddenly everybody sits up. I mean, look what happened in Indiana. I mean, this mm -hmm. is a big moment in um, in the United States' history because business stepped up yeah. and said no mas. And they okay. listened. And they, they listen. Listened Everybody <laughs> listens to business. And, and look at what's going on in Austin. They're going to try to do it bigger and better and worse. <laughs> 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 that's, that's putting it tactfully, David. <laughs> I, I try to be nice on the air. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> try. You know, I, I said I use that term Austin sometimes, and then the mayor of Austin gets upset at me. Mm -hmm. That you said you need to say the state legislature. You shouldn't say right, the specify. City yeah. <laughs> yeah, because even they don't. They were not keeping yeah. it. A Good, we're not the capital. Big distance, right? There. Great that we're not the capital. So, um, it, it, so several of the things that have happened. One of the things is the task force, and, and in relation to Austin, this session. What a great compromise, not compromise, what a great way to get things onto the legislative agenda this time that wasn't working so hot in the past, uh, especially when bad bills pop up, that if one of the task forces uh, recommends something, as long as it's in, you know, in sync with city policy, then we take we'll it lobby in for and it. We, yeah. we, we lobby for it and we get it done. Mm -hmm. And so, it, as I said, it takes longer, but a, a bottoms-up approach always. Right. I, I've learned that in the last four years. At mm -hmm. times, you know, um, I will uh, uh, kind of come in from left mm -hmm. field, and, and I, it just takes a lot more work mm -hmm. to get it done as opposed to taking that extra time and, and making it the other One way. of the things the city lobbyist said to um, the task force was, you know, I'm always in favor of local control, local rule, local... And a lot of these bills that are going through the legislature right now have to do with taking those away. Yeah. You can't have your own local ordinances. You can't have a, a local bag ordinance. You can't have a local, you know, anything ordinance uh, about what you want to do. We don't care whether Plano wants to have plastic bags. We don't care to have them here in Dallas. And it's working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, know, this kind of issue is a, is a seminal moment in... Texas politics because the the logic has been changed mm -hmm. from decentralizing government to decentralize it at the state level government. Mm -hmm. uh, the political th uh, theory is the state, uh, because I was very curious about this inconsistency, that you wouldn't want um, government entities to kind of dictate their future. But at, in Austin, there are many people that don't want that. And so I, pushing back, I, the logic is the states created the United States of America, okay, and, and not the cities and not the federal government. So that's where the power should sit. I think it's... That's, uh, that's their logic. Yeah, that's yeah. their logic. I think, that's, I think it's a bit of a um, bizarre logic um, and... Uh, it's another another funny thing, and then we'll get into this because it's an important point. You know, I asked somebody. I said, "What? Why would you want to put a, a vote for a law that a city didn't buy into?" And their logic was, "I want to protect minorities." And I go, "Okay, what?" <laughs> I said, "That's that's interesting. Okay, I like protecting minorities. Sure. Now the question is, which minorities do you want to protect? Okay." And some of them are mineral rights owners or, or people that want to have plastic bags for free. Mm -hmm. You know, the minority position that, that the city takes in a position. Mm -hmm. uh, look, the big issue in Highland Park is texting while driving. You cannot do that in school zones, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, right? And it's like, oh, you know, that's big government coming in. And I said, no, that's really small government, you know, deciding Seeing how they want Seeing what's best for us what, right what, here. What, what they want to do. Yeah. The the other thing, f to me, is a is a real business issue. As you know, I'm a business person. Mm -hmm. So if I'm governor of the state, I want to make sure my state continues to grow. I want my state to grow faster than the other states. I'm a competitive guy. Okay. Uh, budgets and uh, or revenue and people and everything. To do that, you can't have a one size fits all. Anybody that has marketed their products. They have a variety of portfolio of products to fit different needs. And I think Texas is stronger if we have a portfolio of products that, 
what Big Spring wants is Dallas wants is maybe different things, but as long as we're all in the same ballpark, mm-hmm. you know, I think that's the way we should be approaching as opposed to one size fits all. It, this local control, especially in Texas, makes no sense because you have some parts of the state that are hundreds of miles from a city, and you have parts of Dallas where people never leave the city. They don't have cars even. Yeah, I was told, and I may get this fact wrong, but I don't think it is, We Dallas Fort Worth and Houston now make up half the state. Mm-hmm. Oh, know, I believe that. You know, from a, from a North Texas and kind of mm-hmm. Houston area, and it's a, um, that's a little bit uh, tricky in the things. It was historic, actually, in the last census that urban population in Texas is the majority versus rural, yeah. mm-hmm. which is in the history of Texas has never mm-hmm. happened. Mm-hmm. Right. And by the way, it's also true across the globe. For the really? first time in history, hmm. more people on the planet Earth are living in cities hmm. versus uh, outside cities. Huh. That's Which amazing. I, yeah, I would have thought that would have happened. No, no. Yeah. A lot of Sometime people in China the 20th all century. over uh, countrysides oh, yeah, and yeah. In, in India and everything. And True. They finally kind of. And that's, that's, yeah, where, that's, yeah, that's yeah, very cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, okay, well, I, I, go ahead. I wanted to I was, throw in one thing while we're talking about local control. Yeah. I, I think they're, um, the folks in Austin or we should say state legislature because I do like the mayor of Boston. <laughs> um, I don't think they understand the the world of unintended consequences. Yeah. Because if if this, for example, one of the bills is basically lo- all local control, anything that's outside the state's established purview, um, and that would be like building codes and um, the smoking ordinance. We don't have a state. Well, we law have one to make issuing marriage licenses a state function. Yeah, they want to pull that into the Secretary of State's office. Yeah, I, I, I think they didn't when they started talking about it. I think they're starting to realize it now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I uh, kind of call it a mother may I legislation, uh, legislature mm-hmm. because it's. I don't think they ever want to get to the place where we have to ask permission for everything. Mm-hmm. Every two years they, they do that. And that empowers the Attorney General in an amazing mm-hmm. way. Sure. Which is not written in our state charter, Mm -hmm. that that attorney general has that much power to determine what we can do and what we can't do. I mean, this courts are supposed to do that and not the attorney general. He can opine on it. Before we take a break, we just need to take a quick break. But um, you had said, now, if I was governor of the state, now, if uh, you decide to run in four years, you'll have to resign. So uh, was this an announcement that you're running for governor? No, that was a purely hypothetical. Purely purely Purely. hypothetical. He he, he twisted it around to get Angela Hunt to say she was running for governor. (laughs) That's uh, You did? Yes. To announce it on our show. Yeah. Well, why should she announce it on somebody else's show? <laughs> You're listening to Lambda Weekly on 89.3 Kano and FM. I'm Dave Taffet here in the studio with the late Patty Fink and Lauren Landis. Our guest, of course, is Mayor Mike Rawlings. We'll be back with more with him in just a moment. I'm Christina from the Owens, and I listen to Lambda Weekly on 89.3 Kano and FM. <laughs> See you later. And we're back uh, with Mayor Mike Rawlings. We were just, we started off by talking about a lot of the stuff that was done for the gay community. Some of it was just real subtle stuff uh, that had been um, in the law worded oddly because ours were really early ordinances on some of these things. Uh, So we didn't have the experience of being able to go to other cities and saying, what are you doing? We just said, we're going to do it. Patty, what were some of those things? Because we're, we're racking our brains trying to remember some of the things that oh, I've done over the last two years. Um, well, we had this equality resolution um, that passed May, f- May f- uh, March 5th last year. Which so, we empowered, we, we asked the city manager to make sure all our ordinances were in place to be able to accomplish that. Right, and it was a, a kind of a roadmap to um, really making equality uh, real. Mm-hmm for people in the city of Dallas and at the city of Dallas. And so we have um, a number of things that we've already been able to cross off, which is so exciting. Um, We've certainly raised our MEI score, the Municipal Equality Index score from the Human Rights Campaign. Um, we've um, shored up. ahead of Fort Worth, which is what the most important thing That's is. the most important thing. <laughs> Certainly according to Council Member Jerry Allen. <laughs> it's about making sure we're ahead of Fort Worth. Um, but we've also um, done, done uh, quite a number of things. We've gotten included in the legislative program, um, which is something, of course, the legislature only meets. The Texas legislature only meets every other year for 140 days, sometimes longer if it's special sessions. But we're included in that in our issues. Um, and, and, a, and in a, a flexible way. 
so that when we don't know, we can't first tell the future, but we, uh, we, we have 21 anti-LGBT bills in the legislature right now. And those popped up, so we need to be have the flexibility to respond to them, and have the Dallas, the city of Dallas's lobbyists take part in that. Um, and so we've uh, we've shored up um, healthcare insurance. We have a lot more work to do on uh, transgender issues. Um, lots lots more to do there. But the biggest things that really happen are city of Dallas employees now, whether they are civilians or they are first responders or work for fire and police can leave their pensions to their spouses just like anybody else at the city of Dallas. Which, and that's, that's huge. That's awesome. Yeah, I that, went to all those that's meetings. That's huge. Big. It was big. And uh, You don't want to be a city council person. <laughs> <laughs> I went to all those meetings. You don't meetings. want to be a mayor. Um, yeah, and that was uh, a moment where we start to get into real substantive stuff. Mm -hmm. And not the other stuff's not important, but it's really smaller uh, from an amount of people it impacts and amount of dollars. You start into getting moving, leaving pension funds, and uh, the amount of uh, uh, LGBT uh, employees we have, it really is substantive. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Watching those uh, committee debates, it was the council people against the rest of the board members mm -hmm. on both of the boards, and the two boards are fire and uh, police pension and the other city employee pensions. Mm -hmm. And on the city pension board, it's uh, Lee Kleinman and uh, Carolyn, Carolyn Davis, Davis. Mm -hmm. and the two of them were they went just, to the mat for us they they, they were fabulous well lee is on both of the boards and on the fire police and fire again he took the lead uh philip kingston is on that board he was just furious Tanel atkins Tanel atkins i saw come out after one of the meetings uh there were about 10 or 12 lesbian cops who were there to watch the meeting he came out in tears apologizing to them that he couldn't get them what they deserve, which is just equal benefits. Nothing special, mm -hmm. just equal benefits, so that if something were to happen to them on the job, uh, their families would be protected. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, you know, so, but I think uh, that one took a little longer, mm -hmm. but we, we, got it. Through, we got it through. Some other stuff was happening, and I think they didn't want to fight that. And I also think they, they started to listen to their members mm -hmm. and they realized why are we fighting this issue? I mean, even forces have, uh, the police and fire forces have changed over time. I, I think one of my tactics of telling one of the cops, bring your baby next time. <laughs> that worked. <laughs> that really helped. Well, and it's not, it's, it's not even theatrical. I mean, it's very real. It's I her think. family. Uh, in 2005, when Prop 2 passed in Texas and there was a statewide amendment. What was Prop 2? The, the statewide amendment um, banning uh, in our constitution, state constitution, um, any sort of relationship recognition. Oh, I guess. The, the, the marriage ban and, yeah. and such. Um, oh, yeah, that's why I remember you that. Know, and, and at that time, people were, lots of people on the other side were saying, oh, you know, pat, pat, there or there. You can just go to an attorney and get all those papers and you'll be and fine. And get a will. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and we're like, you have no idea how false that is mm -hmm. because, you know, all you need is a third cousin twice removed or whatever to come into court and challenge it all and now you've used up your estate that you were, mm -hmm. you know, your partner left you. And it's, it's just fraught with so many things. It doesn't tap Social Security yeah. or anything. And when we think about security, you know, laying, laying down in your deathbed, wanting to know that your spouse, your partner, or the person you've built a life with, will in fact get the house, will in fact get all of those things that are personal and, and meaningful, um, that's a worry because there's no real security. Mm -hmm. You don't go to meet your maker with that knowledge that it's a fact. When, and now city of, city of Dallas employees mm -hmm. can do that. They'll have, they'll, you know, I know you're taking care of, I know you're gonna get my pension that I worked all those years at the city for. And they know that because it's, it's, it's done, mm -hmm. you know? And that's, I th that's huge. Yeah. That can't you know, get big, bigger than big that. Big companies across America are, are, are falling in line on that as well because mm -hmm. of uh, Well, when you were at Pizza Hut, Pizza Hut has 100% on the corporate equality index, yeah. so. And don't don't most of the Fortune 500 country um, I mean companies um, have they're, have they're a, getting there yeah. and that was an early one. Well, one of the things CC uh, asked me to do was work with Exxon because Exxon wasn't there, and I mm -hmm. think Exxon has made some significant they have, moves they have. in the last couple of years. So, uh, and to get the uh, mm -hmm. uh, GLBT uh, uh, chamber in, involved with the Chamber of Commerce, and mm -hmm. we're proud that that that's part of it right. now, uh, right. part of the process. So. There's so much going on. You're running for re-election. Re Our early voting starts on April... Tomorrow. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, early voting locations in this, lo in this area, 
the city elections, so Reverchon probably is one of them. The, the Dallas um, Public Library, the main public library. Uh, uh, you can always go to the county records office, and they don't charge for parking outside the county records office during early church voting. Right which across is, from North Park, I always forget mm -hmm. what that church mm -hmm. is. Uh, Redeemer a Lutheran. Yes, mm -hmm. that's yep. what it is. Mm -hmm. And I think Rawweiler might have. I don't know if Rawweiler is included in that. Yeah. So lots of places to go early vote. Election day is May 9th. Right. Uh, there are going to be runoffs, especially in the... Um, uh, races across South Dallas where six mm -hmm. or eight candidates are running in each race. Uh, there's no way to avoid a runoff in those. Uh, your race, if Rich Sheraton gets enough votes, you'll have a runoff. <laughs> uh, okay, so probably That's an inside happen. joke. You have to go to city council yeah. meeting. To yeah, I, I just one. <laughs> <laughs> or, or a county commissioner's uh, meeting also. Um, but, so one of the things that you ran on last time that you you've been working on for the last four years and running on again is grow south uh -huh. tell us a little bit about what grow south is well dallas is a very big city and i think we're we're a little bit segregated not just racially but geographically you know and we don't experience all of of, of, of dallas in southern dallas um is the our prettier biggest, side of dallas it's, it's i a, would say it's a it's yes. 55% of our land mass, only 15% of our tax base, the most beautiful part of the land, most available part, and uh, we are just not growing south, or we haven't been. And so I where, just felt... Whereas on the north side, the city of Dallas is the second largest city in the Collin County. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's massive, and there's a lot of historical reasons for that. But I just feel for us to... Uh, taking the tax burden from the north, let's put it that way, 85% that has to cover all the city is not going to be sustainable. And the, if we want to really grow as a city, we've got to grow in Pleasant Grove. We've got to grow in Mountain Creek. We've got to grow in South Oak Cliff. We're doing it North Oak Cliff. And so we created a plan three years ago called Grow South. It's a very boring 10-point plan, sort of like uh, losing weight. You've got to do all these things but we are making major progress in that. Uh, I will give a report on Tuesday night, uh, and we were gonna kind of look at year three, and just to give you a headline, I'll be announcing that uh, almost $900 million has been added in value in Southern Dallas over the last three years. Hmm, almost a wow. billion dollars. And by Southern Dallas, you're including I, I, Oak Cliff, I'm you're anything south of I-30. I'm defining Southern Dallas as south of the Trinity on the west. Okay. So West Dallas would be considered Southern and I-30 on the East. And everybody thought that bridge was that the bridge Morgan to Hunter nowhere bridge was going to be the bridge to nowhere. And it's like wrong. You know, <laughs> it is just not it. Uh, it's creating a huge we're going to have, I don't know, 1500 or something like that. New apartments up uh, very, very short in West right. Dallas, in West Dallas. Okay. When was the last time apartments were built in West it, Dallas? It, never. It's never been. Yeah. And so you see that taking place. Um, uh, you see what's happening down in far Southeast Dallas. Uh, 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 we're becoming a logistics hub there. This is a business residential neighborhood, um, uh, education all wrapped up in one. How do we attack all those things? And so, uh, it's really why I decided to become mayor. I, I, I knew downtown would be okay. Um, and North Dallas, I mean, it's like, they can take care of it. You know, I can mm -hmm. run on, on kind of, you, know, you have to do some little stuff, but it'd mm -hmm. be an autopilot. But South Southern Dallas seemed to be, to me, the big opportunity. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. um, my favorite new thing in South Dallas <coughs> is the new trolley. The new trolley, Which is yeah. built by the city, but run by DART. Mm -hmm. It only goes one and a half miles. Its plans are to extend it from Methodist Hospital down to Bishop Arts, and then from Bishop Arts over to Jefferson and down Jefferson. And we come back up uh, around. Yeah. And then we will hopefully connect. I spoke to Secretary Fox about it when he was in town. Um, connect that to the Uptown trolley. Hmm. And so you literally would be able to go from Uptown down to Jefferson hmm. on a streetcar, and I think that'll be amazing. I'll tell you, my newest favorite thing, because I was there last night, is the horse park. If you hmm. haven't gotten a chance to go see our Texas horse park, and it's an amazing thing, because so many people would come to Dallas, Texas, and they would say, let's go ride a horse, and we mm -hmm. had to send them to Fort Worth. 
<laughs> this is amazing. It's in, it's in the middle of Trinity Forest, a beautiful, beautiful part of our mm -hmm. city. And we've got a world-class um, horse facility that eQuest is one of the organizations that ran. And I went to a fundraiser for them last night. They helped um, uh, uh, children with real severe disabilities uh, get through those things by <laughs> horse therapy. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's every time you, you, you uh, look up, there's something new happening in mm -hmm. Southern Dallas. We've got the commemorative Air Force that moved from Midland to Executive Air Force put together a huge education pro process and be able to fly these great uh, aviation pieces in hmm. World War II. And hmm. so people, it's starting to happen. Okay, now my favorite thing in South Dallas is the Audubon Center. Oh, oh that's yeah. fantastic. So, I love yeah, that place. Yeah, so the horse park is just north of that, yeah. all right? And uh, it's, it's one of the most peef peaceful places in all of Dallas. Right now, this is the time of the year to go. Are there any plans or uh, ha have you seen much other business activity going on around the horse park, you know, auxiliary businesses? Not yet. Um, but I'll tell you what has happened uh, is that whole area is not in the, um, oh, what's a nice way to say this, in a, in a rat hole someplace that no one ever goes to. There's so many people going that our police have cleaned it up. There's no more drug gangs down there. Mm -hmm. These houses are looking good, and you can see the developers kind of uh, uh, sitting they're, on the side. They're sidelines. beginning to look oh, yeah. and oh, yeah. and I mean, this it, just so. opened up um, a month ago, uh, you know, mm -hmm. so, and then we've got the golf course coming in. So that whole area is going to continue to grow. Hmm. We've got the dart line, the blue line, that's going to go down to UNT Dallas. Hmm. If anybody hasn't been to UNT Dallas, they need to because it's got a beautiful view of downtown and most available land for, mm -hmm. for, for new homes. So we're going to build those as well. Hmm. Uh, that's exciting stuff. Well, t talking about business, bringing business to South Dallas, it, obviously it's great to bring business to Dallas, period. And mm -hmm. I didn't know this, but, you know, everyone knows that um, – Toyota is going to Plano, uh -huh. but we almost got it here in Dallas. Well, um, we, were, we were, they had definitely chosen North Texas. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, they looked at uh, Dallas hard. Uh, they wanted a campus environment. Uh, they wanted um, uh, housing, is, housing and schools are very important. And for a lot of people, a lot of families, the more affordable housing. You know, Dallas, I love Dallas, but Dallas has got a problem because you, you either have to spend a lot for a little for a home mm -hmm. or it drops off into blight-infected areas. And so we don't have that, that $250,000 home, $300,000 home, a lot of those, and then we don't have a lot of space for campus environments. We can go vertical. Um, so uh, that, that's when they went to uh, And what was... Part of the reason that we lost them is uh, DISD? Well, I, I said it was, and, and I was kind of, people confirmed that later, but that sounds like it was, uh, uh, that got to the, the, the cup and all of a sudden, we don't want to go to DISD. I think uh, our public schools are a part of an environment and a perception, if, unless you're rich and send, can send your kid to private school or get on a scholarship, you, public schools where you're going to go and you can look through the ratings and you want to send your your employees want to go to kind of higher rated schools and, and DISD is not there now if you can get into the talent gifted program in Dallas uh, we've got the number one high school in America in America in America right. and it's in Oak Cliff it, it's in Oak Cliff <laughs> Viva Oak Cliff <laughs> Um, and, and Booker T. Washington, uh, five kids went to Juilliard last year mm -hmm. from one high school. First time it had ever ha happened in Juilliard's history. Up to that point, it was only two kids. Wow. So wow. we have those moments. Uh, Woodrow's got a wonderful uh, um, international baccalaureate program that they have. Um, but we haven't been able to scale it, and that's what we're trying to power through it with the mm -hmm. schools and, and the, the real movement that's afoot. This is one of the most exciting things that could happen in the United States of America in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. and, and I know the city of Dallas doesn't control DISD because, right. again, it's its own independent um, school district, but what can a mayor do to help out their school district? Well, let me tell you what I've done, and I, I, everyone's going to have to judge for themselves whether I helped or, or, or have hurt. 
but I have said we need to have the best urban school district in the United States. Mm -hmm. We do not. We are, um, we are 15th percentile, and the metric there, okay, people don't like this, but this is the way you live, is college uh, uh, scores, getting ready for college, ACT or SATs, and we just don't have it. Our graduation rate's gone up, but our college entrance exams have not. Mm -hmm. And this is, a, this is a problem, and this is why parents are, they, they, they find a great grade school, they'll power through a, a junior high, and then they, then they pull the kids out for that, mm -hmm. for that four year. They'll wire around the, the issue if they wanna stay in Dallas. We shouldn't have to wire around issues. Now, what I've done is set the, uh, set the standard, uh, expectations. Second is I've advocated for board of trustees that I believe are um, uh, into making change, let's call it that way, because this has been going on now for 15 years. Oh, right? longer, I think longer. Well, I, I know, but I'm not even trying to blame current folks, you know, for, mm -hmm. for historical stuff. And <clears throat> this is what's gonna determine, it's a train wreck happening, this will determine our future. Then lastly, um, I supported this home rule effort last year um, and it's the basically, if, if you weren't around and you didn't hear, it was an opportunity for us to write our own charter, or what we do at the city every, every uh, 10 years. And it amazed me that so many people did not want to do that. They wanted to use a state charter. Now, just coming back to local control, <laughs> if <clears throat> we said that, that we wanted to be a city chartered by the state and do everything the state asks us to do we would have a revolution on our hand but we don't want to take over a school system All right and to me that is a little ass backwards and uh so i advocated for that we di i didn't get what i wanted to get out of it uh, and mainly because the board of trustees felt that i was going after their jobs and i wasn't i was going after changing the election date to November so more people showed up, making sure that uh, we had term limits. I did want term limits. Mm -hmm. And I did call us all to be accountable. If we are not growing faster than the, uh, the, uh, the average in Texas, in Texas, someone should have the right to recall uh, a board of trustee. We can't do that now. Mm -hmm. We cannot recall part, anybody. And part of the problem with uh, people coming on board with the home rule is I think a lot of people don't even understand what it is. It was so complicated. And and I pride myself in being a simplifier and I wasn't able to simplify it. I should have been much more precise of the policies, but there were a lot of people, inside that was the belief that school teachers' rights were gonna be taken away because those are the things that are kind of guaranteed it in, mm -hmm. in Austin. That was a fear. And so everybody said, okay, you gotta vote against it, we'll all be fired. There's not that much protection anyway in Texas, but some of those things could theoretically happen. I wasn't supporting those things. Mm -hmm. That's not what we should have been changed. We need to take a break. You're listening to Lambda Weekly on 89.3 KNON FM in Dallas. I'm Dave Taffet here with the late Patty Fink and Ron Landis. We're talking to the next governor of the state of Texas, Mike <laughs> Rollins. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> This is William. I download Lambda Weekly podcast from lambdaweekly.com. I'd love to have your thoughts. And you're listening to Lambda Weekly. Uh, we're talking to Mayor this Mike Rawlings. He has a question for us. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I do. I, well, you know, I, I think the sign of a good of good government is when leaders ask questions. Yeah. Sure. Of, well, absolutely. that's what I've done a lot with this community. Um, I guess my question is. Why does Texas, why the, the some city, cities in North Texas still kind of hold on to an old way of thinking about LGBT issues, and specifically around marriage equality, you know, specifically around marriage equality? I, I, I think it has, I, I, first of all, I don't think if you really went by the numbers, it's not as bad as people think it is mm -hmm. in terms of how people feel about it. Just about everybody knows someone is GLBT. Uh, whether it's in a workplace or a family member, I think a lot of it has to do with not getting out and voting when they have an opportunity to make a difference in those and on those issues. And and I think too, I think there is a um, there are certainly um, groups and organizations and coalitions 
um, within the LGBT community at large across the country and locally um, that that have you know tapped faith-based leaders to have conversations with other faith-based leaders um, about this very um, these very issues and how mm -hmm. to reconcile them uh, because uh, you know many people including myself have a you know have a, a deep faith that they they value and um, and it is incorporated into everyone's daily lives and um, you know without imposing mine on you and yours on mine you know it's um, it's a tough thing to mm -hmm. tackle but for example Equality Texas has really worked with folks over at Texas Freedom Network and to have uh, town halls and talk about these issues HRC has a has a, a faith-based um, group uh, lots of ministers rabbis um, imams talking about this issue um, across the country and uh, I just think we need more of that mm -hmm. I think it would be it would be great and we certainly need more of it in this city mm -hmm. too mm -hmm. although when you when you zoom out <laughs> you say we really need to send them to Plano <laughs> yeah. it, well and, and that's what's interesting when Plano uh, people wanted to get rid of the ordinance that had just been uh, passed, they didn't come to Dallas to help them with organizers. They went to Houston because they couldn't find those bigots here. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah the, true. It, it was the Houston was group the that people. failed in recalling their petition that they brought up to Plano and failed in, yeah. in, in even greater numbers. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's petition. funny because when I get into conversations about people, uh, with people on this issue that are that vote against an issue, okay? Mm -hmm. And I try to, it always comes down to a religious belief. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, that, that concerns me because I believe our faith-based community is one of the strongest foundations we have in Dallas. Sure, I, sure. I, I worship in a different church. I was at, um, at St. Paul's down in, um, in, in South Dallas this morning. These are great people doing you know wanting to push the the envelope and as far as transformation but these but people say well it's in the bible or i was taught that or i believe that and, and so it helped me in really sorting part of that evolution of myself how do mm -hmm. i lead a community that believes this and and mm -hmm. but personally mm -hmm. i believe that that there Believing in the separation of church and state is a really important thing, not only constitutionally, but how the world works. And Christ said, you know, uh, uh, given to Caesar what is Caesar's and, you know, mm -hmm. given to God what mm -hmm. is God's, that we have to respect a civil way of going about life, okay? Mm -hmm. Elections and mm -hmm. court systems and Sometimes I don't get my way, but that's the way the world works. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that I have to live that and believe that in my religious beliefs. I can separate those two things in my head. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and I think that's what we need to, mm -hmm. it's tougher in Texas for some reason. Everybody's kind of. You know, when we passed our first ordinance in Dallas in 1994, I believe it was, uh, Steve Bartlett was mayor. He was going out of office, and we weren't sure we had the votes. And what this was for was for um, non-discrimination among employees of the city. And uh, Bartlett voted last, and he said, I don't discriminate in my own business. I don't think we should discriminate as a city, period. I remember several people like Domingo Garcia who sat at the end of the horseshoe. I was sitting in the first row. He looked at me with this look like, but we just went, okay, yeah. you know, we'll take that. But, but I think that was an honest. But, but so, so many, and I think that's exactly what they should, we should be thinking mm -hmm. about. But so many people believe that if I believe something spiritually, I cannot vote against it in I have to support somebody that is pro-life, for instance, okay, mm -hmm. if my church believes it. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I think we're a more mature and I think successful society if we respect a Hasidic Jew that believes how they want, or, or an Amman that believes certain things, mm -hmm. okay, and say, but that's different than the way we're mm -hmm. going to live our our civil life, mm -hmm. and, uh, and and I don't think we're there yet. And other cities, other states are. 
you know. And I, and I think it's a real struggle for some people not to, you know, to uncross the beams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, because we, we beams know are crossed, aren't they? They are, yeah. and it's and it's really difficult. And I think um, we see that, like in Indiana, when we were just talking about that, the uh, the beams were definitely crossed, and people were saying, "Well, I want to be able to discriminate against," and they don't see it this way. They see it as religious freedom. And it's just what you call it. But for the receiving end, when you're turned away from a business, that's discrimination. Mm -hmm. I, I'll serve you, but I won't serve you. And I, and I, I think a lot of people have, um, I, I think it's part of the backlash, actually, against marriage equality, because we've made such gains in marriage equality. And people who really you know, do have sincerely held, deeply held, closely held personal religious beliefs that this is not the way it should be, um, are you know stri striking out any way they can to try to reel it back in and protect themselves, and they see themselves as now being persecuted because of these things. And yet, um, let's say that the 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 Supreme Court's decision and ruling in June is in our favor, and so marriage equality is the, the law of land. Um, we will still in Texas be in a not in the city of Dallas, but in Texas be um, a state where you could get married and put a picture of your partner, your spouse, up at, on your desk at work and get fired because you're gay mm -hmm. or because you're trans. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's kind of a crazy, crazy workaround, but it does come back from, um, from folks you know, with those cross beams. They think that their religious beliefs ought to be good for everybody. But and, and, and that's it's by, hard. But and, and understand for me, uncrossing the beams means that we also must respect religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. Sure. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. sure. And and I think that gives me the freedom to do that mm -hmm. as well as believe in uh, what needs to take place at the mm -hmm. Supreme Court. And then mm -hmm. we need to get that done. So you know, I have a great example of that. Um, my synagogue brought in an exhibit to the Holocaust Museum called um, Persecution of Gays in the Holocaust from 1933 to 1944. We did this a couple of years ago. We need to, needed to raise some money, so we went to some of the employee resource groups in the area. We went to Texas Instruments. Well, the gay and lesbian group didn't have any money left for that year, but the Christian group did. Now, this is a Christian group that formed a TI in order to do prayer readings and um, other things like that that normally that's not how we normally live but that's their focus they had money they contributed they not only contributed they came down helped us set it up they were hosts they th that's a great example of really working together and and mutual respect you know, so much of this is the culture wars that we're mm -hmm. we're, we're still in the, we're still fighting and it saddens me because I think we're so much better as a country when we don't mm. fight with each other. Yeah. We learn to respect each other. And kind of we didn't know who this group, we yeah. just knew that they were from TI when yeah. we found out who they were and that they were the ones who had the money to contribute. Wow. That's good. That's, that's, that's awesome. That's, okay, now Josh has a question he's been scribbling at me. The mayor's intern program provides community involvement in... Oh, uh, well, we were just talking earlier about education, and yeah. I was just going to, to add, but it's kind of late now. <laughs> but I was just going to add that, you know, that is a great program in terms of providing students the opportunity to work with businesses and to work to get a broader experience. Because as a teacher, I can tell a student what, you know, do this, do that, do this. But really, if they're in the business and they're learning about it, I mean, that's a great way of yeah, it, educating them. Well, thank you for bringing it up because I believe it is one of the most exciting things that uh, that I'm doing. And by the way, it wasn't my idea. It was actually Tom right. Leppert's it's, idea. He started, We, but it was just amongst a few dozen kids. Now we've got, well, last year we had 300. I'm pushing wow. for 400 this year. And basically a kid works in a white-collar job, okay, uh, for the summer, like an intern, he's be a, a, a junior or incoming senior, and many of these kids have not been in an elevator, mm -hmm. okay, a, a, you know, in a forty-story building, mm -hmm. have not had to take figure out how to take the bus and be there promptly, mm -hmm. look good, shake someone in the hand, you know, with a, a strong handshake, and it's it's so invigorating to see these kids step up. Hmm. There were a thousand kids that interviewed this last um, uh, couple hmm. of weeks ago, 
and I think we only have 350, 400 mm. spots. So so many of them didn't get it. Uh. But that's the way the world is. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it so is. you're lear you're learning that, okay? Right. Yep. Why did I win and she lost, or she won and mm -hmm. I lost? And now that's a learning experience for them. And so uh, we need to. I want a thousand jobs every year. Okay, um, we're about to run out of time, and we have to talk about it. I don't, I don't know if you've heard about the development in the Trinity. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you this, think? this has come up. You think it's come up? Just a couple. I, I'm just asking. But can uh, I, I thought it would be. I thought it would be over uh, gay rights would be the big <laughs> <laughs> But no, it's yeah, the that, Trinity. that was like the mayor came to uh, one task force meeting last year. It was during the Ebola crisis, and we all looked at him and said, "Oh." Yeah, all of a sudden the gay and lesbian group is the easy group to go visit. Right, exactly, it was. Compared to Ebola, it right. was. So, well, um, I think the vocabulary word of the of the month is charrette. Yeah, charrette. Was, yes, <laughs> a lot of people don't even know what that is. A small dress or something. Uh, yeah. so, so what is the compromise plan? I, I read something briefly in the morning news. I don't think it really explained it well. I listened well, to the I listened to the briefing live you did. online, and I just have to say. I have never seen our sleepy, kind of dull, sometimes a little animated, but not very much. City Council, wow. It was uh, not, what did they, they have? They were animated and loud and popping off at each other, and you did a great job of navigating all of that. And Angela Hunt said she could support you. Yeah. Well, but kind of, it kind it was, of in some ways. You know, it's sort of like that Don't Miss TV or whatever. It, yeah. was, it was kind of... Go back and get it on DallasCityHall.com. It, it I had more people it. say that was the most entertaining couple of three hours that they've spent. <laughs> so what is Here, this actual here's, plan? Here's what's going yeah. on. Okay. <laughs> because the balanced vision plan and the petition failing in 07, the city proceeded to build the highway that was supposed to be part of this. Uh, and uh, that was sent to uh, the feds and uh, the Federal Highway Administration kind of gave approval to that. There are a lot of people that felt that was a misuse of power. It didn't represent uh, what really was supposed to be in the balanced vision plan and that we were going to create a super tollway down uh, the middle or a good part of the Trinity uh, Parkway. And they said, no, we don't want that. And there's been a lot of fighting against that. Uh, for other reasons too, but for the most part, I, I, at least the alignment I found with them, uh, those folks that have been anti, or we, we've got a beautiful piece of green space and we don't want to screw it up with a highway, okay? You know, mm -hmm. that, uh, that everybody kind of buys into that. Simply because Texans must have their horse. Yes. You know, we, we all must have our horse. That's the, that's the mentality. We, we, we need green space. Uh, so what I did last fall was hire a group of urban designers, what have been called the dream team, from all over the nation, come and say, help us sort this out. Give us a plan that we might like that could fit within uh, what we've been offering up to the feds. They worked, they did, and that was this plan. This plan seems to have, at least amongst the politicians, uh, unanim unanimous support. People are liking uh, this. We're going to take it out to the public and get their uh, input on it as well. I've never seen Sandy Grayson giddy. Yeah. Okay, she's she, giddy. And you've got to go to DallasCityHall.com and, and pick the video, and or DallasCityHall.org. And, um, and find the video because it explains the plan and you get the entertaining side stuff. So, But she was very excited. So the argument was about was the folks that liked the plan said, let's throw out what we've been, we've been offered to the feds. Mm. And uh, they lost that. There were 10 of us that voted to keep what we had the, uh, at, the, uh, uh, at the feds for two reasons. One, it was really just kind of a vision without the specifics, uh, you know, that we need more specifics about it. But more importantly, that the feds have been a big partner in this and we should just not whipsaw them. We need to kind of sit down with them, explain what is all going on. And that was where the big fight was, mm -hmm. uh, uh, ultimately. So the point is that we do have a plan that at least amongst the politicians people are liking, should be a cheaper plan and also the great insight for me was these designers said we need a road to be able to get down into the Trinity. Uh -huh. Okay, that was a different use of the road as opposed to just a bypass mm -hmm. and, and ramps. They took a lot of the ramps off 
they made it from six lanes to four lanes. They made it a little meandering as opposed to just a dead straight. Lower, lower speed limit. Yeah, well, that, they didn't talk about that. Yeah. They, you know, that's part of the issue that we. But a more meandering on. road it will be a be. slower road. Yeah, sure, sure. So anyway, long story short, uh, that's kind of where we are in the process. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have public meetings here in the next uh, few weeks. And, and, and things that will be built in the river bottoms, that's all up for grabs still. Well, yes and no. I mean, uh, the balanced vision plan created a, a, a vision of lakes having like three large lakes down mm -hmm. there but the specificity around that is not is not uh, robust enough mm -hmm. we need to kind of work through how does this road fit into that so uh, we've got some broad vision but I think a lot of work still needs to be done there mm -hmm. Good. So it, so we'll keep our place in line basically by staying that's with the plan my, of the feds. That's my belief. I don't want I I want to get this thing going and get it done in the next 4 or 5 years as opposed to being another 10 years right. because ultimately uh, it's just going to create Every time more you delay it exactly. Yeah. And so how do we as I use an analogy how do we keep our speed but ramp it mm -hmm. as opposed to come to a dead start and turn right and go to a different direction and and there are people that argue that point because they they've been screwed before and I appreciate that but as mayor that's how I'm feeling okay now I was told it would not be a good idea to ask you to fix the pothole on my street that's, um, <laughs> have you done your 311 311 app has, oh you believe me Adam knows uh, <laughs> um, the construction on I-30 and I-35, any idea when those will be done? What's the schedule for those? I-30 will be done next year. Okay. okay. The Margaret, end of 16, uh, or the, the, the Margaret Mark McDermott, McDermott Bridge is going up. The end up. of 16. You see already it happening. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not, I, the, I think it's the next year for the whole horseshoe for, uh, yeah. to be done. Now we have the Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge, the Margaret McDermott Bridge. Who is the third Margaret that's? My wife's name is Margaret. Oh, okay. okay. She, there she you have it. And, and she, it's Mickey, but her real name is Margaret. So she goes. We could call it the Mickey Bridge. She, she goes, I need a bridge, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, I would have to stop being mayor and go m make some money. But uh, we're going to probably only have two. Uh, it was originally kind of vision, vision just uh, three uh, three Margarets, but I think it'll be something else. Only two it's Margarets. like Margaret, Peggy, and Maggie. You yeah. know, we could do <laughs> I want to thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you so uh, much. for doing this for the city. Oh, sure. Yeah, sure. And, thank you and, for coming on. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, and I hope you'll come back sometime. We'll do it. Good. Yeah. We'll do it. Uh, next you. week, our guest is uh, Harriet Earhart, former state representative. We always enjoy having Harriet on, and we'll be back next week with more Lambda Weekly. KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas and Fort Worth, the voice of the people. Business owners, tell KNON's listeners about your business. You can put your business or event on KNON. KNON currently has space available to run announcements for you. Tell KNON's listeners about your goods, services, nightclub, concert, or event. Help keep the voice of the people on the air while putting your information on the air. KNON's been named the number one radio station in Dallas by both the Dallas Observer and D Magazine. Put your business with Dallas's number one station. Call now for more information at 214-828-9500, extension 227 or extension 233. For more information, go to KNON.org and click on the Run Spots on KNON page. It's a great way for your business to support community radio while letting more people know about you.